Well, here we are, four days away from Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week. By now we would have had all the flowers organized, we would have our ushers picked out, our, our readers and our acolytes, our choir would be working on phenomenal anthems that would carry us throughout the whole Holy Week, the holiest time in the church here. And yet these pews are empty and they will stay empty and none of those other things seems to be happening. We're all meant to stay home now. I promise you that we will find a way to celebrate Holy Week and Easter with meaning and with dignity. But in looking for ways to celebrate that with you, I also am all the more mindful that we should name what is very much right in front of us. This is not the Easter and Holy Week that we wanted. None of this is what we wanted. It's awful. And I find comfort in naming it that way. Letting awful be awful. There will be silver linings in all of this. There have already been silver linings in all of this. But if we let the pursuit of those silver linings overwhelm us from allowing us to grieve, take us away from the chance to grieve our new reality, then I think we actually prolong that grief. We make it worse. And so we will celebrate Easter and Holy Week because those will happen. The tomb will be empty whether we are here or not. But there is some solace and comfort in saying this is not what we wanted and naming it so. There's also tremendous biblical precedent in that too. When the early Israelites were coming out of Egypt and they spent their 40 years in the desert with Moses, they complained about that experience a lot. So too, when the Israelites were cast into exile in Babylon, that's where we get so many of these rich lamentations that are throughout the whole Old Testament. Our ancestors were not afraid to name the situation that they were in and to say, this is not what we want. We are grieving this experience. They do that also in the Psalms. The Psalms are littered with sadness and with sorrow. But also look at the Psalms a little more closely. Every Psalm bounces back. They acknowledge what's bad, they acknowledge where they are, but they also swing back and say, yet we know that God is with us. Think of that most perfect Psalm, Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, naming it the valley of the shadow of death, yet I will fear no evil, for my God is with me. Though I am before all of my enemies, be they economic insecurity or the virus or health concerns or loneliness or depression or just the struggle of trying to figure out how to manage a home life and work from home at the same time, just to figure out how to run out to the grocery store in a way that's safe, even though I am before all my enemies, yet God still prepares a table before me and my cup overflows. Keep a record of all of those blessings that you find throughout this because there will be so many blessings. But friends, don't be afraid to let yourselves grieve too. This is not the spring that we asked for. It's not the spring that we wanted. We didn't want to cancel our plans or suspend all of those things that we had hoped for. We did not want to worry about all of this so much. But we are here now. We are in the desert. We are in the valley of the shadow of death. The sooner we name it that for ourselves and for one another, the sooner we can recognize that God is also with us there. The sooner we point out the enemies that assault us, the sooner that we will realize God has laid a table before us and our cup still overflows.